Hello and welcome back to uh, Dyson Sphere. So you can see it's always progressing, um, always having to solve different production bottlenecks uh, or, or actually no, not production bottlenecks but raw resources running out. Uh, so now I'm actually capturing uh, raw materials from two uh, three, I should say, the home star system, then Tajat, and now Gina as well. So there was a question or a request to actually show how to uh, enable interstellar travel or transportation, uh, which I'll do today. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, the main thing that you need to... Well, what makes it really easy is if you are at the stage of producing the green, uh, the green research cubes, um, and I'll show you why in a second. I'm just trying to find where the research green research cube production uh, is. Okay, it's over here. I know because it's near all of these things. Okay, so the reason why it is actually um, easier to do it after the green uh, tubes or whatever they're called the gravity matrices are there is because or well, you're producing them reliably at a reasonable rate it's because there's this recipe um, oh they've actually nerfed it. it used to be one for ten now it's one for eight uh, but it's still pretty good um, uh, as you can see I'm not really doing any research anymore because I've completed all of it, right? Like, except for the stuff that you can't complete if you look at upgrades. Um, these are all infinite researchers, uh, research that there's no point in keeping on doing it because there's no benefit for it necessarily. So I have kept the green cube production uh, going and I've left sort of everything hooked up and I'm just using it to produce these, uh, what are they called? These space warpers. And then what happens, uh, what you need to do is um, just feed them into one of these uh, logistics stations, the interstellar logistics station. And it, <coughs> when you just feed it in with a belt, it first fills up this slot here up to 50. And then you can also, and I would recommend that you do this, you can actually uh, also have them just be a, a, one of the things that you distribute in your um, planet or even your interstellar system um, by also having a slot filled with them so that uh, it's a lot easier to um, when you place down any other inst interstellar logistics stations anywhere you can just put a local demand as one of the five options um, for these space warpers and then they automatically get filled. So I'll show you that in a second as well. Um, but yeah, so all you really need to do is get to the point where you can produce these green, uh, these gravity matrices and then use this uh, recipe in a uh, assembling machine to actually convert them to these space warpers. Okay, so uh, here's an example where I have some local demand for space warpers for one of these other industrial logistics stations. So what was happening just before is that I was actually running out of coal on this planet. Um, and then I also happened to find uh, a planet that also had organic crystals on it. Uh, but it wasn't in this um, star system, it was in a different star system. So what I did is that I just put down this um, industrial logistics station and uh, I added local demand for space warpers and then I'll show you the other end of this as well. Uh, you'll be able, you'll get to see uh, warp, the warp drive active. The hardest part of the warp drive is actually finding where it is that you need to go, uh, like where the planet is that you want it to go. So I'm trying to go to being, yeah, a Gina. Okay, so this time it was actually reasonably straightforward for me to find it, but sometimes it takes a bit of time of searching actually. Um, so once you are outside of the gravity influence, you can enter warp drive. 
Now, the good thing with uh, with this, um, the interstellar logistics, is that you don't actually have to have the uh, warp, whatever they were called, those little squares um, on the other side. You just need to have them on the demand side. On the supply side, you don't need it because the ships will carry enough that they can go there and back, uh, which is quite handy. Now, one of the things that I did find is that occasionally your ships will get stuck between star systems. I uh, don't know why, but um, once I'm at the Agena star system, I'll show you an example. I don't know if it's still stuck, but then it just... Um, they are just stuck and are going at normal speed. I think I am on Agena 3 in this system, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's see what happens. Uh, nope, I'm not. So, ah, here we go. So now I have to just go over here. But, uh, yeah, let's see. If I go to, yeah. So let me sh try and find the vessel. Okay, so the... Mm, no, I don't think they are. Oops, stuck anymore. So... Between Tejad, I'd made some mistakes, so I'd reassigned some, um, some, uh, I guess, demand and supply, and it resulted in one of the, maybe one of the ships being a little bit, uh, or, or having to return back and then having to go again, and maybe it ran out of the warp, um, the warp things, whatever they're called, and then uh, it just is stuck. It gets stuck between going fairly slowly it still goes so eventually it'll clear but um, you can imagine how long it takes at sort of the non-warp speed to actually go between these star systems so uh, okay so let me just speed up and I'll I'll be back when I'm on that planet okay so now we are approaching Agena 2 which is actually a very nice planet very green Looks a little bit like the starting planet, um, and it has similar resources on it as well. So on here, you can see that I put down one of these interstellar um, transportation stations, and I hooked up a couple of coal. And also, what was nice is that they actually have these organic crystal veins here as well, which is quite handy because there's a fairly lengthy production chain, um, including having to go and use chemical facilities which are very very slow in this game uh, so it's nice to find like a natural resource and there's quite a lot of it here it's about what two million or so um, so yeah I hooked up three coals and quite sort of in a standard way I'm just feeding it into this interstellar logistics station you can see there are no ships here there's there are no space warpers here or anything like that you just have to um, make sure it's powered and then everything works and the ships just come, collect the coal and then head off home again. So they take enough of these uh, space warpers so that they can return. Um, but I don't know how many times it enables them to return, probably only once. But the hardest part of um, coming onto one of these new planets is actually the figuring out the power situation. So what I found usually the easiest thing to do is to just put down I think about 6 to 12 of these um, thermal power stations and find some sort of source which can be like coal in this case or it could be hydrogen uh, it could be something else that you just feed in here to get this powered and also to power your um, local uh, uh, I guess miners or, or yeah, mining machines the other way of doing it, which would be possible, but uh, would be a little bit more effort, is actually to use these uh, these here, so the energy exchangers, which probably produce, if you just have one of them down, uh, they produce enough. But then you have to make your, um, get these, what are they called, these accumulators into your interstellar transportation, which is not too bad, but it's a little bit more effort than felt like going into um, but yeah and they also take like two slots which is quite a lot because you have to demand the accumulators and then supply them as well 
So unlike the home planet, it's fine because it's going to be really painful to actually figure out proper power production there. But on these kind of small mining outposts that just need a little bit of power, uh, mainly to just get this charged fully, um, I think this like this arrangement is, is, is perfectly fine. And you can see that it's actually got a huge amount of excess, um, even with 12. So you can probably get away with six. It just depends on how patient you are with actually getting this uh, charged up. So anyway, that's, that's interstellar uh, logistics. Let's head back home and I'll do the conclusion as we go uh, in warp. Once um, the planet disappears on the left, you can actually able to go like in that in, you know, area where the planet would usually appear. Um, that's how you know when you're no longer under the influence of a certain uh, planet. So yeah, it's the summary is wait for, wait, uh, wait until you have the green research cube production, the gravity cube figured out, and then uh, just hang a uh, assembler of, of that production line and produce your warp cubes or whatever they're called. Uh, feed them into one of your interstellar logistics stations and make sure that you have it set to supply locally as well. And if you want to have other um, interstellar logistics stations around the place, you just um, uh, you just do local demand. Um, Anyway, that's that's all of it. Uh, I'll leave you with the really cool side of the uh, Dyson Sphere here still being constructed. The last few things are being patched on. Actually, um, I ran out of some of the, uh, I think the rockets were the main problem. So I think I fixed that production line now as well. Um, so it should finish off the last few uh, nodes in it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, talk to you next time.